Hey folks, it's the afternoon of the 24th of May and this is Neptune 2.5, me being a little bit arty and I'm going to be having a look at Neptune through the houses but in a way that's a little bit different from before so patronise me just for a couple of minutes. Here we go. Neptune takes you outside of the sensory. We have the five common senses that humans all have, but Neptune re represents that which is more than just the five senses. It is the sensual. It is the consensual. It is the extra sensory. It involves the intuition as well as the instinct, the imagination. And the position of Neptune in your horoscope by house shows the way that it works in your life at a day by day and month by month level. If Neptune is retrograde, which it is in 40 to 45% of cases, then the lessons are to be learned more internally rather than externally. Neptune in the first house, the house of identity, brings a sense of not really knowing who one really is. It talks of how one feels more comfortable being part of a greater whole, part of a greater sense of unity as part of a species rather than an individual. And indeed, the more you try and gain a sense of solidity and permanence of identity, the more confusing and nebulous it gets. It is only when your, your, your achievements benefit those less fortunate than yourself and you really get a strong sense of identity. Neptune in the second house suggests that as you get older and particularly as you get closer to the end of life than you are to the start, so your sense of values uh, dissolves and matures and grows from that of being purely material to less than material, more spiritual, more aesthetic, more subtle. Neptune in the third house is not a particularly brilliant position because it deals with the minute by minute, the up to date, the constant non-stop movement of life. And Neptune here can get very confused. It can do thousands of words and thousands of appointments and still not find meaning and just get caught up in the superfluousness and the superficiality. And whether this is sibling or people who fulfill that role, there can always be the potential for misunderstanding and confusion. Neptune in the fourth house is not in a bad position. It brings the aspiration for a comfortable home where one can be oneself, where one can be safe preferably near water, but also where one can bring the, the element of safety to those that need it, whether it be the very young or the very old. Neptune in the fifth house brings the desire to be creative in an artistic way, but in a way that also embraces the more childlike side of life, often given to the more hedonistic and irresponsible when younger, but when older to the more artistically dynamic and imaginative as well as creative. The actual turning of this into substance is sometimes one step too far for these people. Neptune in the sixth house can bring the angel of mercy. And indeed, often some of the best victims and martyrs do have Neptune in the sixth house, more commonly retrograde than not bringing the area where they choose voluntarily to take on other people's problems so that other people benefit, even if they don't. It is, it is if they are already wounded so one more thing doesn't hurt. And eventually they kind of pay off what they see as their duty and karma and they end up realising that they are invulnerable and then they realise that they can't help anyone else anymore until they're in a good working order themselves and that putting themselves first is not selfishness, it is self-enlightened interest. Neptune in the seventh house. Once they get over the desire for the perfect partner and realise that the perfect partner has always existed but that they are two years old and living in the Amazon or 98 and in a cave in the Himalayas, that perfection does not exist and that their partner only needs to be doing their best and they only need to be doing their best. But that is the ideal. Neptune in the eighth house brings a much greater appreciation of the deeper power that lies behind value, behind money, behind sex, behind all types of power. But it also brings with it the conscience and the knowledge of the implications of using that power in the right and wrong way. Neptune in the ninth house is in a great position because it aspires to greatness. It aspires to almost divinity 
to linking at the more spiritual, the intuitive, and the higher knowledgeable areas of life with divinity, with the universe, with the higher knowledge. Neptune in the 10th house. Often this is common in the charts of people who are visible in some type of artistic or medical or possibly scientific field, who are recognized and known and have a kind of glamour or enchantment about them in the public eye. Neptune in the 11th house people are those who will sacrifice themselves when younger for the benefit of the greater community, but who when older become very good at subtly coordinating, networking and facilitating in and with community. And indeed, they sometimes feel much more comfortable in community than they do alone. And Neptune in the 12th house people, those who are on their own, these are the people who bring a sense of aloneness into the world. They remind us of the need for magic, for spirituality, for dream and for downtime. Neptune on the IC. Never find the home. Never knew one of the parents. Confusion around early childhood. Neptune on the MC. Hey, rock and roll star. Hey, movie star. Hey, poet. Hey, dreamer. Neptune on the DC, on the descendant. Soul partner? Ha. Ah. Watch out for the addictive, either from you or from them. And Neptune on the ice, ascendant. Rare. But I've seen it a number of times. You have the power to actually reach your dreams as long as you can keep them grounded. Neptune, Neptune through the houses. Next, I'll focus on Neptune, the positive side. Enjoy.